welcome to the next Fireside Chat. I'm Kina, this is Tabby. Hey guys! Hey, and uh, we thought we'd sit down and talk to you about what, you know, we have lots of different types of glitter, which one is best for what? So, you know, it makes sense, like some people go, what is craft glitter good for? What's poly glitter good for? Well, that's what we're going to address here. Okay, so what do you think? Well, let's start with picture well, number one. Start with picture number one. Start from here. Okay, great. So, um, I put this image in for a reason. Can you guess why? For outdoor use. Yeah. When you're doing um, glitter fights outside, when you want to use glitter but you don't want it there forever, the biodegradable is going to be the best glitter for you to use. Yeah, I mean, just this summer, um, I had a, a, a big event call us and they wanted us to sell them glitter to throw off a parade float. And I wouldn't do it because they wanted to use regular glitter and it's just, that's not fair. You know, there's no way you can sweep it up. There's no way you it's can contain a, it. it. It lands all over the place. There's just no reason to have um, a, a loose <laughs> glitter uh, floating around um, without cleanup. You know, there's just no reason. We have biodegradable glitters. We should use them. So um, not only do we have a beautiful silver and a gold holographic, but we uh, are coming out with, and you don't even know this. I don't, I've been hearing little rumors about new colors coming out. There's five new colors. Oh my god. They're beautiful. And there's one that is corn based. And oh, it, that's fabulous. It starts to biodegrade upon contact with moisture in, I believe, five minutes. Oh, that's right. We were just looking at that so at the beginning of the week. That's perfect for like it's weddings. Brand new. So you're, you're chucking the wedding. And the best part is that particular glitter, the corn glitter, can be cut in any shape. So if you want to have stars or something to throw over, stars uh, you know, or, lips or, or little or brown dots over your. Um, Dots or hearts, oh man. Over your wedding, yeah. That's, so, that's going to be big. So, you know, the, with biodegradable glitters, there's just no reason not to use them. Yes, they're a little bit more expensive, but if you got them, if, use if them. If you've got them and you want to do the environmentally nice thing and yeah. actually use the biodegradables, spend a little extra money. Glitter does go a long way. Yeah, it does. So, it does. even a little bit will go a long way. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I, I put this image up because uh, we want to talk about cosmetic glitter, right? So whether you're doing a photo shoot or, you know, you are a fashion person or you're theatrical, um, you know, there is such a thing as cosmetic grade glitter. And, um, and it is something that you don't want to use regular poly or craft glitter on the skin. It, it's not designed for that. Our cosmetic grade glitters are designed for that. Um, we follow the FDA rules on this. Yeah, it's a, it's all about colorants and materials, and uh, the FDA has um, set out very specific guidelines, and we have a, an official statement that you can read. In fact, we can um, post it below the page here so that you can read it. And uh, basically, you know, they, they've only tested a certain number of colors, they've only tested a certain number of um, film materials, and they have approved them. There are a number of things they haven't tested. Does that mean that they're non-toxic or that they're you know, unsafe? No, it, it means they haven't tested them. So we stick with selling cosmetic grade glitters for cosmetic usage. That's the safe and smart thing to exactly. do. Exactly, exactly. So um, let's go ahead and take a look at another image. This one here um, is uh, another uh, image of a woman, and I believe that in this particular case, she's used a couple different flake sizes. That last one we looked at was like an ultra fine. Yeah, and, and we do have the possibility of of the varying sizes. Um, yeah. And you get different looks. So, you know, exactly. it, it's nice to mix it. You can see you've got this overall blue effect, but then you've got this gold got going into the bigger yeah. flakes, and it, it really pops. So, you know, uh, cosmetic glitter is uh, not just for wearing to clubs and, and going out on a Friday mm -hmm. night. It, it can be a, a beautiful tool for photographers. So this image I put up very specifically, um, the ladies, uh, it's Ashley Guzman, is that her name up there in the, does it say that? Yeah, Guzman. Ashley Guzman, she's a club, club member, very, very beautiful photograph, and what she's done is illustrated what I want to uh, talk about next, which the is... The eyes and lips. Right, so the, the, the FDA has different approvals for different parts of your body, mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, it, if it's cosmetic grade, it, it means, okay, we're dealing with the body, but it doesn't necessarily mean... Her Every, lips and eyes. Right. So in this picture, you can see she's got glitter on her eyebrows, which would be considered skin. She's got um, glitter on her eyelids, which would be considered eyes. She's got uh, glitter on her cheekbones, which again would be skin. 
And she's got glitter on her lips, which would be considered lips. And so each cosmetic grade glitter has a usage chart. The family at large, so say you're looking at the cosmetic metallic glitters, that will have a usage chart that will show you whether it's okay for lips and eyes. If there's a check in the box, it's okay. If there's no check in the box, then it has not does not have that um, FDA approval. Right. Now, there's some glitters that have all three. You'll see that they'll see a category and it'll be like, mm -hmm. like for example, I think all the, the uh, mica, mica elements. Yeah. All and, the mica. And I think that I think the polypearlescence might too. And, and you'll see there's three check marks. That means use it any way you want. It's all use good. Use it wherever you want. Yeah. Yeah. But if you see just a couple check marks, you know it's something to think about. And Follow by those. Go by those go guidelines yeah. if you are concerned yeah. about that. And, the and other, a lot of people are. It's true. And but the other thing is, is the FDA changes their mind all the time. Mm -hmm. So just because it says something in May doesn't mean it's going to say it in August. So mm -hmm. keep an eye on those charts and don't assume anything. They're continually changing the and giving us updates. So totally. Always, always open those usage charts when you're looking at the cosmetic grade glitters. Yeah. Don't just presume anything. Absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah, I put this craft. one up because of theatrical uh, uses. This is craft glitter. This is craft glitter. You can get a bigger flake in it for purchasing a smaller amount on our website. So the craft glitter, you can get like a chunky or, um, or I even a jumbo flake and that jumbo flake is going to give you a bigger sparkle in the farther seats than you will find with chunky flakes. So right, right. once it, again, it's, it's all nice. about that size of the flake. Yeah, um, I mean, if you're playing like a little regional house or something and that your audience is 10 or 15 feet from you, it doesn't really matter what you use. But if you're doing a, you know, a Broadway show or you're you know, doing a situation where you have a balcony and so forth, you gotta get those bigger flakes. And uh, I, I went recently to a small theater and uh, <laughs> they were like, yeah, we tried glitter, but we switched to sequins. And I was like, why would you do that? Sequins don't sparkle as much. And they're like, oh, no, we tried. I said, I don't think you got the right flake size. So I hauled in my, my boards and I showed them, you know, mammoth squares all the way down, you know, mm -hmm. colossal down to fine. Yeah. And I, I put them way back in the, the back seats. And they're like, oh, yeah, you're right. We were using the wrong flakes. So, you know, craft glitter is a beautiful thing. It, it comes in a lot of different flakes. I mean... You can get the polyester in larger flakes, but it's expensive, but you have and you have to buy, buy a, lot a ten of it. pound box yeah. minimum of the bigger flakes yeah. for poly. So. You can get as small as a three quarter ounce jar of the craft flake in a bigger flake size. So craft glitter is very um, it's it's a cheaper glitter. It doesn't have uh, ability to handle uh, sun exposure very well. Um, or heat. Yeah, heat. It doesn't like heat. It doesn't work well so um, with putting it on the skin. Yeah, it's gonna melt. It's, You're going to end up with that color melting on, possibly melting onto your skin. It's, it's like it's it's. I, it's I, I don't, I'm not sure I would say the melt so much, I, it, but it is sort of. It's sort of it just it just kind of bleeds into your skin. So you definitely don't want to use it on, on your skin. And I've I've seen people doing that on the internet. It's horrifying. I think we've pretty much oh. knocked that out of the, I, the industry. I so. think we've we've made a pretty it, big deal. Out of it. It, it, it's been it's been really bad. Yeah, it, it's, we have another section coming up in a little bit that we will show yeah. you what happens with the craft glitter when it does get heated up. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, basically craft, um, good for arts and crafts. Um, it's really, it's great for photo shoots in some ways because uh, it, it's big and you need a big flake for the camera to really catch a lot of light. Uh, mm -hmm. It also drops really fast though because it's heavy. But uh, I, I think it's good for, you know, uh, schools, obviously, children's crafts. Children's crafts. Um, something that you want to work fast and... And, and, and it's not to... going to be in the sunlight. And volume. When you need to fill big spaces or bury, it, you know, tabby. Very, yeah, very tabby. <laughs> that did. was so much fun. We did very tabby. <laughs> You'll have to see the video. <laughs> I, I, got, I got buried. I did. So I put that one up shoes. specifically because these are children's shoes and kids grow out of shoes really quickly. So using craft on them wouldn't be a bad thing. No, because the, kid, the child's going to wear, going to grow out of them faster. So you won't have to worry about the fading with the sunlight. Right. Um, if you do the hand-me-down thing... They'll probably last a couple of kids because they do grow so fast. Yeah, it's one of those things where, um, you know, I, I certainly wouldn't go investing in, in polyester unless you're selling it. Like, if you're selling it on, mm -hmm. as a high-quality item to somebody else, then certainly, you know, bump yourself up to poly. But otherwise, if you're doing a nice craft project for your kid and you just want to make some old shoes look nice, craft glitter would be totally fine. Now, yeah. if this is for yourself and you wanted them to last a couple years, 
Poly. It's, I think I you, switched You've to got to switch to poly, definitely. Yeah. So that's why I put that on there. And I put the money on there to remind you that craft is inexpensive. <laughs> <laughs> and so if you, if you have to recode it because it's faded, you know, so what? It's not that bad. Yeah. It's not that bad of a price. All right. So this one is a, a fine art, right? So this is an mm -hmm. application of polyester in fine art. Exactly. Um, our lovely artist, Diza, did this painting and put glitter on top of it. Yeah. It came out fabulous. It's the beautiful. sparkle, the shine, the shimmer, even though it's a smaller flake size, it's still gorgeous. Yeah, poly's really special it's that poly. way. That's right. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it, if you're doing fine arts and you're selling it in, in, a, in a situation where you are in a gallery, polyester is the way to go. Now, I do know that one of our wonderful club members, Arian Wheeler, is doing craft, and I have to say, um, amazing. His stuff is amazing. So, you know, Aaron he's Wheeler, able to pull yeah. it off, but he's also doing gigantic pieces. He's not doing, this thing is this big. Arian's it's doing like, you know, six, eight, eight, eight and six pieces. Feet. Craft glitter is yeah. going to, you know, be good for that. I think there's even a, a 12 foot oh, one. There's an stuff. airplane it's or something. Fabulous. Yeah, we'll, we, we'll link to a site below. you got to see it. It's amazing. It's amazing. Okay. Um, and this one is poly again used in an industrial application. So we're moving into poly uh, as, as an industrial glitter in, in the next few pictures. Mm -hmm. So And on this one, again, the poly is going to stand up to the sunlight. It's got that UV protectorant. Um, it holds up to your solvent-based materials that you're trying to add the glitter to, whereas craft glitter Melts. will melt. <laughs> it, it, it just disintegrates. It's yeah, it's, hard. Not, it's not solvent resistant. <laughs> you know, the thing about this is that you know, within poly there is um, different grades and, and 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 coatings. So don't assume that all polyesters are are solvent-based, or solvent-resistant. They're not. No, you need to really look at those usage charts. We have usage charts all over the site on these stuff. And the description. Stuff. The description and does the descriptions. too. Yeah. So the information is there. Please read the sites. Yeah, you don't want to buy something and then, you know, you're coating it and all of a sudden, you know, your solvent's melting it. I mean, there's nothing worse. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we provide the information. Please use it. So this, again, is just poly used in an industrial application. What you're looking at here is a carnival ride seat. Mm -hmm. And again, the, the, if you're out in a carnival all summer long, you got a whole lot of sun exposure. So you need to make sure you have that UV protector, <laughs> poly glitter, and make sure that it's used for that effect. Right. So we actually developed a site, uh, a, a space on the site called Glitter for Floors and More. Well, this is the and more here. Um, exactly. So you know, yeah. it, it's gonna, it's if you want industrial glitter that's gonna hold up, like if you're doing fishing lures or you're doing carnival rides, or you're doing cars or or you're doing floors. That's the section. You want that. You want that glitter for floor section. Um, it's it will give you the different usages. Here's one of the floors that we've now, one of our clients gave us. I put this image up because there's a cheat in here, and a cosmetic grade glitter was put on this floor. In addition what? to yeah, in addition to regular. Um, is, is that glitter. why we're getting that extra little silver flash in there? It's actually a full spectrum rainbow. It is golden eye. Golden eye stood up. And it stood up. But the reason I'm putting wow. this here is run tests. If you have fallen in love with a glitter that we say is not industrial, we're not standing behind it if you use it in an industrial situation. No, if it fails for your application, that's not on us. It, we it, always it, tell yeah. you test. Right. If you don't test, you can come up with something horrid. Now, it, it worked, kind of, we guess. <laughs> we'll see over time. Uh, but it, it doesn't have UV inhibitors. But that's the problem, is you know, five years from now, this floor could need to have to be done again. We don't because know. Because it, it could fade. You know, it doesn't have the epoxy coating. It doesn't have the UV mm -hmm. inhibitor. It's a cosmetic glitter. It was not made for a floor. I mean, mm -hmm. it looks spectacular now, but... But we, we've gotten people who have done tests and said, well, this isn't working. Why can't you give me something that looks like this that'll work? Right. Um, we've been making and finding new film and new processes awesome. to go through to bring you new glitters. Yeah. Um, we never know, I never know, when you call on the phone bank, because I'm, I'm your main phone gal, um, I don't know what Kina and Eddie have planned for us. Well, we don't I always know because a lot of these things are in the pipeline for months. 
you know, we're, they're running the test, they're doing the chemical work and all the rest, and it isn't until, you know, they finally get something that works, because there's many, many fails that go into every glitter. Mm -hmm. Many fails. And then finally the chemistry works, boom, it becomes a product. So, you know, there's all kinds of things in the pipeline, and then we're like, yeah, it, it came through, it worked, it tested, right? Okay, good. So, you know, it, there's a lot that goes into glitter. It's not yeah. like you can just go, I would like that in craft. I would like that in poly. It's not how it works. It's a, it's we a, can't do it. It's a lot of chemistry. It's, the film is different. Um, the transmuting, if we go from a craft glitter and try to make it into a poly glitter, the film is totally different. Yeah, There's and, and no the colors way to do it. are stick And the colors change. Yeah, yeah the colors are going to change so, you know, because the materials have to be different. This is just a final one here. Uh, it's a, a card that we recently did. And again, um, you know, these, these glitters are, the ones in glitters for floors and more are industrial. This is Centauri Silver on that car. This is the iridescent um, Sirius Shimmer on this car. You know, these, these are real industrial glitters. They're not lightweight, you know, craft supplies. These are the real deal. Uh, mm -hmm. You can use them as craft, you can use them with kids, you can put them on their shoes, but mm -hmm. they're actually industrial glitters. Remember, craft glitter is the VW bus. <laughs> the poly glitter is the Cadillac. More so, like the Rolls Royce. Rolls probably. Royce. There we go. Okay. We'll, we'll change that saying. We'll change that saying to Rolls Royce. It truly is. The poly glitter is truly a high end, yeah. wonderfully diverse glitter. It is. It's beautiful. Um, I, 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 I love it all. I, I have a soft spot in my heart for, for craft. But when I'm doing my so fine art stuff, I pull out the poly. When it comes to the grandkids, um, working with the grandkids, and working with the younger folks that I do crafts with, craft glitter, 90% of the time, 80% of the yeah, time, I'm going to use craft glitter. But for stuff like, she just brought up the calming jar. Yeah, so I brought the, I wanted to bring this up so Tab could talk about the phenomenon. with When we do certain projects, you can use either kind of film, but each one sort of has its drawbacks. Its drawbacks. Now, on the craft glitter, when making your calming jar, if you're using a warmed up liquid in order to fill your jar up with, a lot of those craft glitters are going to bleed the color into your liquid. It's just a matter of, of the heat tolerances. They don't have them. Also, some even without the heat over time will. Yeah, aluminum based glitters especially. Um, there's a whole video on it and uh, it has to do with off gassing and all kinds of stuff. So um, test like crazy. Test, test, test. If you are not testing and you have a fail on a huge project, you are going to be horribly mad. Well, it's, it's You're expensive. Be raging. And it's you get behind schedule. And, you know, the thing is Timelines and customers get mad because it didn't turn out the way you wanted it to right, right. or the way they wanted it to. Right. When you're going for colors, get samples. Yeah. Show your customers the yeah. colors that they have available. And test. And uh, test. And like crazy. I mean, the thing is, is that you always say, I don't have time for samples. I say, well, what's going to happen if you get the wrong glitter? Number one. And you get there, you do your project, and it's the wrong glitter. Now you have to next day air out yeah. the product again, if you can even get the product. And now for testing, we want to go for either the mini jar or the three-quarter ounce jar. Um, it's a, The three-quarter ounce jar is one quarter less than an ounce. It, it's, so it's a good hefty amount of glitter to be testing with it is, and you can good. use it with multiple options that you may be thinking, well I can use this process or this process or this process. Get that three quarter ounce jar and test. Yep, that's it. I mean honestly, the final word is test. Test. <laughs> Always test. <laughs> Alright, well we hope that helped. Thank you so much guys. You have I, a great one. High, high five. five! There we go. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> Bye, guys.